The stage is set, and the long-anticipated Super Bowl matchup sees the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Evan Lasik, joined alongside Hunter Pitkoff and Jeremy Gaines. The Chiefs took the first game against Tampa in the regular season, but we've seen Brady versus Mahomes multiple times in past years. So Jeremy, I'm going to throw it to you here. Which future quarterback's legacy is on the line more after this game? I think we know for sure that Tom Brady's legacy is totally concrete in terms of him being the GOAT. All those Super Bowl wins, the amount of times that he's been to the big game, you know, you, you can't take that away from him even if he loses this one. The only question is can he elevate to a somehow even higher level by winning a Super Bowl on a new team without Bill Belichick? If he's able to do that, then it takes this conversation about the greatest of all time into a whole new stratosphere. This is way more about Patrick Mahomes and Hunter. I think you'll agree this is about you know, what his ceiling would be as a possible greatest of all time candidate. Right now, he's probably the, you know, it's not a debate. He's the best, he's the best quarterback in football right now, and he's the most exciting quarterback. It's, it's a question of, you know, beating the GOAT at this stage in his career and, and winning another Super Bowl two straight on top of the fact that he's already been to, he's won the Super Bowl already, and in his first year as, as a full-time starter, he was like a couple plays away from the big game, never got that chance in, in the overtime, that AFC Championship against Brady's Patriots back a couple years ago. So this is really about how high Mahomes could possibly go years down the line. Yeah, this is like Jesse James versus Billy the Kid, two of the best gunslingers this game's ever seen. Uh, I am really excited for this matchup just from a football fan perspective because you got you know Tom Brady here, like you said, Jeremy. He's the undisputed GOAT, and him winning a seventh championship, I mean, that's more Michael Jordan for crying out loud. He's arguably the greatest athlete we've seen in team sports, and then Brady has to be in that conversation. But they got Pat Mahomes too, and this is why I think the pressure's on him for his legacy. I mean, I think if he loses to Tom Brady, I'm not sure we can say he's better than Tom Brady when Mahomes' career is done because head-to-head, -head, Brady's going to have that knock against him. And it's also worth knowing, too, that, yes, obviously Mahomes did win the Super Bowl last year, but it was against Jimmy Garoppolo. This guy had, like, one of the worst fourth quarters we've ever seen from a quarterback in Super Bowl history. So now he's going to go against Tom Brady here. Tom Brady, we know he's going to bring it, especially in that fourth quarter, so Mahomes has to bring it, too, to bring it home for them. Very good points there, guys. I think these are two of the best quarterbacks to exist right now in the NFL. Now, Hunter, I'm going to turn it over to you. What can the Buccaneers do to slow down this Chiefs' explosive offense? Um, I don't know. That's a really good question, Evan. Uh, but in all honesty, though, for one, you got to make this game one-dimensional if you're the Chiefs' offense. The Chiefs are going to go deep in their bag. You know Andy Reid's going to pull out all the crazy plays in their playbook. So you got to stay nice and content and focus if you're Tampa Bay, but take away the running game. Now, you're probably thinking, like, wouldn't you try to take away the passing game? You're not going to. The, the, Pat Mahomes is going to get his. Tyreek Hill is going to get his. Travis Kelsey is going to get his. But if you're able to take away the running game, that makes them one-dimensional being the Kansas City Chiefs. The Bucs have one of the best run defenses in the NFL, and therefore it will be easier to defend the pass. You're going to force Kansas City into third and longs, second and longs, and that's going to make it a lot easier for the Tampa Bay defense. So when I look at defense, I don't so much look at, look at what you're going to do against that run game. I'm not so much worried about it. What I focus on is who in the passing game are you going to stop? Because, you know, as a whole, that passing game is going to be productive for the Chiefs. It's a question of who are you not going to let beat you? Is it Tyreek Hill? Is it Travis Kelsey? Is it Demarcus Robinson, who as of right now is on the COVID list, might still play because he's a close contact? Uh, you look at McCall Hardman as well, Sammy Watkins, if he gets healthy. There's a lot of pieces in the passing game specifically for the Chiefs. You have to pick one guy to stop, and the other guy's going to get his, as you said. You know, Mahomes is just too good. It's a matter of what you can kind of cap his ceiling at in terms of making a play here and there that might ultimately win you the game. You're not going to stop him. You might not even keep him under 300 yards. He's, he's going to play well. It's a question of what, you know, three plays max in that game are going to be the key to you winning by a possession maybe. You guys are absolutely right. This offense is one of the most terrifying we've seen in the NFL in the last few decades, I believe. So we saw the Tampa Bay offense start off fast, but then cool off in the second half with a few painful turnovers during the NFC Championship. So guys, what can the Buccaneers offense do to help against the Chiefs? I think the most important thing, and Hunter is probably going to allude to this as well, is going to be establishing a running game. We know the Bucs like to push it downfield, and they don't have a problem doing that. I don't think Mike Evans is going to drop every ball thrown his way like more than 50 yards through the air like he did in the NFC Championship. But playoff Lenny, we need to see more of that. He, the, <laughs> 
him establishing him and Ronald Jones, if he's healthy enough to get a large amount of carries, that's really important because it's going to diversify that offense. You know, if they're able to run the ball, especially up the middle and across the edge, like they've been able to with Fournette showing his athleticism, you're going to be able to bring those linebackers up, and that is going to help the, the Bucks do what they ultimately like to do, which is go over the top to Mike Evans. You know, maybe Chris Godwin underneath. The, they, they had a lot of success against the Packers finding ways to move the ball in chunks like that and getting him maybe 10, year, 10 yards down the field, turning it to really big gains. That's what's really important is bringing those linebackers up and finding ways to expose the defense over the top. Yeah, playoff Lenny, I love that, Jeremy. But like you said, it says it right here. Establish the run. That's exactly what the Tampa Bay Bucks need to do. They did not do as great of a job against the Packers. And what I mean by that is time of possession. Aaron Rodgers went on the field way too long, and that's why the Packers almost pulled off that upset. But, you know, a couple of mishaps in the fourth quarter perhaps prevented that. If you're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here, you got to establish the run. And like you said, Leonard Fournette has been really cooking here. And let's see if Ronald Jones is able to come back as well. And we know the Chiefs. They're explosive. They're going to take shots down the field. I know Brady had three interceptions, but you know what? He's still got to be aggressive and take those shots down the field when they give it to them. The Chiefs defense, they can be exposed a bit in the secondary. So they got to go, you know, bar for bar, if you will, with the Kansas City Chiefs here. And I, I think that's probably going to be the recipe of success because the Chiefs are going to put up points. So Tampa, you know, they're going to have to do the same. Guys, the more you talk about it, the more I am excited to watch this football game. I think it's going to be a real offensive battle. So, gentlemen, the last question I have for you is who do you see coming out of this holding up the Lombardi Trophy at the end of the night? Well, I think it's going to be like Drake going back-to-back -back against Meek Mill. I think the Chiefs are going to do the same thing and win their second straight Super Bowl. I'm going to go 35-28. And, Jeremy, you alluded to a bit before. The last time Brady and Mahomes faced in the playoffs, Brady was with the New England Patriots, of course. He won the coin flip in overtime. Mahomes didn't even touch the field, and that's how the Patriots won the game. I think history is going to do a little bit of a backtrack here, and I think Mahomes is going to lead the team down the field and ultimately win it for the Kansas City Chiefs. If you're the Tampa Bay Bucks, though, this is year one of the TB12 experiment. It is not the end of the world. I mean, the fact that they went to the Super Bowl as a five seed, didn't have a single home game, is really impressive. Although this is technically a home game, if you will, since the Super Bowl will be in Tampa Bay. But the Bucks had a great season, but I, I did pick the Chiefs entering this season. They've been my pick the whole time, so I, I can't go against them now. Yeah, I mean, it's not profound for me to say this at all, but Patrick Mahomes is the ultimate X factor. When you talk about X factor, you're talking about a player who can make the difference in the game depending on how they play. Well, Patrick Mahomes is, is that ultimate weapon you have in your back pocket. No matter what the score is, no matter what the situation in the game is, as long as he's healthy and able to be out there on the field, he's going to make a difference and give you a chance to win. That's what we saw in the, in, against the Niners in the Super Bowl last year. That, that was a pretty big deficit they were under, and Patrick Mahomes led them all the way back by playing absolutely insane in the second half. He's capable of doing that and you know if the Chiefs if the Bucks excuse me get out to a, a bigger lead play well early you know that he's going to be able to bring them back Mahomes is if he needs to I think I think there's a pretty fair score to throw up here 37 to 30 you're probably looking at both teams scoring in the low to mid 30s I think it's just a question of who gets the ball last and is able to make those last few plays in the fourth quarter and if it's Mahomes who has the ball my money's on Mahomes <laughs> and the Chiefs well, guys, I, for one, am very excited to see the outcome of this Super Bowl matchup on Sunday in Tampa Bay. That will be all for this edition of Penn State Sports Night. For Hunter Pitkoff and Jeremy Gaines, I'm Evan Lasick, and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.